takeoff or landing. But really that STOL means that you can fly this airplane with a pilot's license, with no medical, but you must possess a valid United States driver's license. So you don't need to go get a But the gross weight of this, uh, of this airplane exactly a twin, except the other one you have to have a medical. So that's how they got away with this thing. Now this airplane is has a O200 engine in it. If you're all familiar with the Cessna 150, it has the same engine as the Cessna 150, except it has the uh, O200A engine, which is an actual heavy engine. Please, please. And a heavy starter, the original heavy starter from the 1950s. Now why they do it? But you can get the, uh, well, this airplane is actually uh, came up from the uh, Zenus 701, which was actually designed to carry a Rotax engine, which is much lighter. This engine clean is 190 pounds. That means no, that means no starter, no alternator, no muffler, uh, just magnetos or whatever when it comes out of the overhaul shop. It was overhauled, so it's got, I think, about one hour, two hours, on it. that's it. It's got the mineral oil in it for breaking oil, and that's what he has in it. And then we go to the wings. As you notice, this has a special slot here. It's got a slotted wing. This, this little slot allows you to actually take this airplane, take off at a very steep angle. So like a Cessna, you know, will stall at 17 degrees. This airplane will stall at 25 degrees. But on a day like this, you're not going to be able to stall this airplane. It's not going to stall. I don't care what you do. It's just going to mush in. So the stall is when the wing drops. You know, I don't know if everybody is a pilot here. You stall the airplane, one of the wings drop. You make sure you got your rudder, foot on the right rudder pedal if the prop is going in a clockwise direction or you're going to put it in a spin. Of course, your instructor takes you to 5,000 feet or whatever. But this airplane is, is very difficult to stall. Now, if you do take off at a steep angle with this thing, you better have the fuel pump on. Because what's going to happen is that the tanks are going to be kind of even with the carburetor, and the fuel is not going to flow, and your engine is going to quit on takeoff. But when you test this airplane, just fly it like a Cessna 150. Don't be doing funny stuff over here in this airport. You want to go ahead, do steep takeoffs initially, and go to Carroll County do it there because over there you can do at least 10 touch and goes with this airplane. No problems at all. Now this airplane is nose heavy so you got to be careful when you land this airplane. So don't be coming down and don't be cut that throttle off. You cut the throttle off in this airplane it's going to come down like a rock. So you're going to have to come down at 60 knots which converts to 70 miles per hour. I got all the air speeds calibrated to miles per hour you can always change that so so basically the uh, for the flaps to go down you don't put the flaps down till you're 70 miles per hour no faster than that that's what the rule that's what the designer says and uh, it goes uh, about uh, 90 miles per hour or something like that cruise and 122 miles per hour is the never exceed speed it's 34 miles with the flaps down for stall. But don't be coming down here landing this thing at 34 miles an hour because you're gonna, this, 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 this engine is heavy and it's nose heavy and you're gonna bust this tube over here. And all it is is a bungee cord in there. If you guys wanna open up this little thing over here, you can see the bungee cord. That's all the, that's all suspension you have in there. One little bungee cord. Like if you look like, you gotta look on the side. My gyrocopter, when I come down, it's, it's just a one-seat gyrocopter. It's like a lawn chair. I come down 70 miles an hour till I'm three feet off the ground. I don't even think of because I'm going to hit the ground too hard. Because, uh, because as you can see, the weight of this aeroplane, it doesn't have much inertia. And you all know about inertia. You know, like a 747 has a lot of inertia. Now, the struts, when they were installed, Tom, uh, Tom and everybody, Tom, he did everything correctly there. Because let me tell you something, if you don't drill the holes in the per cor correct position, there is no adjustment for dihedral. 
there is no adjustment for wash in and wash out. So what you have to do is after you put the uh, wings on, you have to put a string from the first rivet line all the way to there, tight. Grab it real tight, get a ladder over here, and it's supposed to be 80 millimeters from the first rivet to the string. It was only one millimeter off between each end, and you got plus or minus five millimeters. And if you put a digital level here, when the aeroplane is level, it's supposed to show three degrees angle of incident. Now about the avionics. Now the avionics, this aeroplane, you don't need anything to fly this aeroplane but an oil pressure gauge, oil temperature gauge, and an airspeed indicator. You don't even need a tack, but people like to have a tack. You can get one of those tiny tacks and wrap it around one of the spark plug wires. Because, you know, the tack is what? It's full power, half power, or idle, you know? You just go by your ear. But this aeroplane comes with a Dynan, $5,000 Dynan computer. And everything is on the computer. I will turn it on and can take a look at it. There Everything two, comes on that computer. There are two systems. Uh, yeah. One system for engine, yep. second one for flight instruments. That's right. It's got, uh, it has, uh, and it has an electronic compass which is attached in the back. So it doesn't even have a magnetic compass. It's an electronic compass which I calibrated this morning. And you have to put it in the back, away from anything magnetic, and with the rivets you use to put this together, the electronic compass, they have to be aluminum. They it's can't be the stainless up. steel. If a match, uh, everything has to be aluminum and everything. I'm sorry? No, 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 no. You just you just use an aluminum rivet, and you just there, there is no steel in it. You buy. It. You go out there. I put a little compass rolls thing up there. I got it like you go north, then you go east, then you go south, and you go to west, and you just keep pushing buttons in there. And then after you put in, it, it does it. And I did it this morning. And it's, it's I put it on a in line with the runway. It says three two zero. So we're good with the compass. I I want to point out there's missing instruments. I I have. I should have brought, but it's home. Uh, a garment. It's like a car, but it's for aircraft. Oh yeah, the GPS right there. GPS goes yeah. in the middle, yeah. and then the, all the little holes are cooling for an iPad. iPad, iPad yeah. Mini. So many yeah. people hook them on these rods or on the right. windshield. I am going to build it right into the panel. Right. These holes are so your iPad will battery will cool because you don't want that iPad battery to blow up while you're flying. <laughs> of course, if it does. You just pick it up, open this door, throw it out of the airplane, and go back flying. Don't panic. You know what I'm saying? You know, you've seen the YouTube all these odd telephones blow up and all that because heat. So that's what that's that's for. And now the history of the building of this aircraft. Okay, Joe will do that. Uh, Tom bought the kit five years ago. It was 2012, and then he spent five years at suburban airport in Big Hangar to build the, uh, the wings, to build the fuselage and so on. But suddenly suburban was closed and what to do this aircraft. So we moved the fuselage to this garage in the Silver Spring and wings he moved to Eastern Airport. Only hangar I can find. He couldn't find any hangar. He, for example, found a hangar at Tipton, and uh, the, the first price was 360. And when he tried to put an aircraft over the price was suddenly 600. <coughs> so he said, "Go, you know the rest." Yeah. <laughs> Ladies are here. I can use. And then, and then at Tipton. They are very strict there. You can't be working, you can't be building and working on airplanes over there. And they're very strict. And then uh, in September 
2018, uh, Tom called me and asked me, can you help me to finish this aircraft? But this word finish, this, this aircraft, it's simple work, but it was a lot of work with details. Like, is everything fair? We have to move the wings here to this hangar, and we have to thank, really, we have to thank the Chuck, because Chuck was organized. yourself you see as, you can, as I can move this everything moves you see the whole thing the whole thing moves now the flaps are up but these flaps only go they only go 15 degrees down that is all and everybody watch yourself and there they are you see when you put your flaps down which is that's it you can also control as you're coming to land but, but it's not necessary for you to even put these flaps down uh, unless you do, you're going to land in your backyard. Chuck, I want to tell everybody I'm the one to drive to Monte's Pizza. I've, okay. I've ordered uh, two big pizzas. Questions or anything? Guys, look, I received this step by step certification guide from. EAA. When you are a member, it costs seventeen dollars. When you are not member, twenty-four dollars. And with this booklet, you receive all documents. You re receive experimental signs and so on. This, uh, this uh, plates. One second. But what's the most important? This is really sorry for this. Like for idiots.
position lights work. You know what? All those, all those great You should build a 750. They have punched holes now that are the right size. You don't even have to drill them. It's not fair. Like on the 12 and the 14.